The views and opinions expressed in this podcast by the host and or the guest do not necessarily reflect the views of the host and or Paranormal Buzz Radio and or its sponsors. Use of any material produced by Paranormal Buzz Radio without express written consent is prohibited. Paranormal Buzz Radio will not be held responsible for you holding your knees, crying and rocking in a corner in a puddle of your own urine, or being beheaded by a group of children in a cornfield. In fact, if you come across a group of children in a cornfield, we promise to make fun of you as you run away screaming in terror. Listener discretion is advised. Paranormal 5 is bringing you Para Peeps New England to help showcase some of the best in the paranormal and unexplained in the area. Their goal? To show the strength of paranormal unity by giving everyone in the field a voice. Join them as they discuss everything from haunted locations, aliens, metaphysical, cryptids, and much, much more. So sit back, enjoy the show, and as always, thank you for listening. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to episode number five of Para Peeps New England. My name is Rich. And I'm Missy. And we are of Paranormal Five, a Maine-based paranormal family. Uh, first off, before we get started, I just wanted to say thank you for everybody again for tuning in, uh, and everyone who tuned in to last month's episode, and another thank you to Matt Warner for joining us. Uh, that was an awesome talk with him, so we appreciate that. Uh, and we are super excited for tonight. Tonight we have a special guest with us tonight. We have Jen Morrow from Maine Paranormal Society. Uh, Jen, welcome. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us tonight. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. So um, we just like to kind of get started and dive right in, and, and we've asked everyone this so far, but what is it that kind of, or, or what is it that shaped your paranormal interest, and, and, and what was it that kind of got you involved in this field and, and got the interest going from the start? I was actually a client, okay. sort of a client. Um, I had, I've, I've had paranormal experiences all my life, but sometimes I see them as solid as you or me. And there's no bell that rings, there's no smell, there's no sound, there's, they're just there and then they're gone. And very startling, especially when you're by yourself. Sure. You know, and so I was channel surfing and I saw an episode of... <laughs> Ghost Hunters. And it was the Eastern State Penitentiary mm-hmm. episode. episode. Okay. Yeah. That was a good episode. I was standing on my on my couch screaming at the TV going, what are you doing? What are you doing? Because they're just like running towards this activity and I'm going, these guys are nuts. What are you <laughs> doing? going the wrong way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like yeah. people actually do this. And I, I, t- I just tuned in week after week and I'm going, are you kidding me? Yeah. And eventually... The science of it, or the debunking part of it, the de-escalation mm-hmm. part of it, actually started clicking in, and I'm going, "Oh, okay, I I need to talk to these guys." And um, I got into a chat room, a paranormal chat room, yep. and, a million years ago, and um, they said that there's actually a Tabs family in Maine, mm-hmm. and they were having a presentation here in Saco at the Dyer Library. And I stopped in and, and totally had a panic attack in the back of the room because they have all their equipment set out. Sure. They're actually talking about this. They spend thousands of dollars on it, days, weeks, months, years. And, and I'm just like, oh, my God, this is real. And so I talked to him at the end of it, and I said, okay, you, you know, you've got a big network. Yeah. This is good. So introduce me to someone who make it go away. And he laughed, and he said, that's not how it works. And I said, no, 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 come on, come on. There's like a whole bunch of different people out there. Introduce me to the one that will make it go away. And he goes, no. And what he did was he handed me a business card, and he said, we're looking for a sensitive, and I would like you to join so that we can educate you and desensitize you. Awesome. And I'm like, you totally misunderstood this whole conversation. There's no way. (laughs) So it took me a month of just thinking about it, and I thought, you know, this is an area of fear that I have in my life that I, I don't want to live in fear anymore. Um, Twelve years later, I'm, I'm still with them. So. That's awesome. So now when, when, when you presented that to them as far as making it go away, you're referring to just your trying to deal with your abilities, not necessarily like a situation you were in, like a... There was no, <laughs> there was no discussion about abilities. Right. It was to me, it was just like 
you know, they, they just pop up, here they are, and then they're, they're gone. I don't want, I don't want any of this. Yeah. And so he thankfully said the word sensitivities mm-hmm. and never said the word abilities. Okay. And so, fine, let's go investigate claims of the paranormal. Let's debunk some shit. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, I can. And again, here comes the power of attention, which I, intention, which I understand now, which I really didn't understand then. But I said when I started the journey, okay, guys, don't do anything for a whole year. Do not do anything, nothing. Make it nice and quiet. And it was probably the quietest year that team's ever had. Really? Because <laughs> <laughs> I just wasn't ready, you know what yeah. I mean? And so, like, you know, it just, it was a nice, easy start. Nice. Awesome. So you've been with TAPS for 12 years now. Now, yeah. what is your role as at MPS? I'm the case manager. And um, we, I'll take in the cases and I'll talk with the clients and... I find out what their need is because sometimes their need isn't sometimes their need is that they're the ones that are haunted not their house Correct. and they're the ones that need help with their sensitivities mm-hmm. and their abilities mm-hmm. and so to actually hear their stories and say you know like the well, like I had a client that contacted me who's had investigations uh, they talk to their their spirits all the time, and mm-hmm. she even said their family. We we really miss them when they're not around. And I'm like, why? <laughs> what do you need with us? Yeah. And and as she kept talking, I'm just like, this is the next step. Like they need to learn, or they need to participate in paranormal research. Yeah. And so I intentionally, I I actually took the the call thinking I was going to be referring them to somebody else because I, th- I thought they were looking for somebody else. And it just turned out, I'm like, no, I really think that you need to participate in this mm-hmm. and you need to learn that you have this ability to do this too. Yeah. So, you know, yes, as a case manager, it's making sure, you know, all my cats are herded in the right direction, uh, making sure that, you know, everybody's safe, we have permission to be where we are, um, so it's it's all the you know logistics of that, but it's also making sure that we are helping this client and not just trying to get another notch in our belt. Right. No, and, and I think that's that's awesome and an awesome way to look at it. And and actually, this is one thing that I was really intrigued about. You know, getting together with you as far as from the aspect of being a case manager. And and but but first, before I ask my next. Going back to the you know the way you described your experience going to that meeting in Saco, do you feel like that kind of what you got out of that is that what led you to want to almost be in that role? Because it almost seems like as the case manager, you're then looking to do the same. Like, do you see yourself in the clients? Like how you went to go and seek. I do now. Yeah. I do now, but when you know, there's a lot of turnover with paranormal teams. And there's probably a lot of turnover with any any activity that you do. Yeah. So it just happened where, you know, the case the old case manager took a step back and just kinda looked at me and said, You're you tag your in. Yeah. And I'm like, Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait a minute. You know, I mean I think the same thing happened to Luke, you know, the tech manager took a step back and they tried to look at me and I'm like, You do not want me touching techie <laughs> stuff. Sure. So that meant you you're it. Yeah. So it didn't intend, it didn't start that way, right, but right. Um, now I'm just like starting to understand why things are happening the way they're happening, mm-hmm. and thankful that you know because of my experiences that yes I can now say, you know you you're on a path and there is forward momentum that you need to be aware of. Yeah, mm-hmm. cool. I like that. Now, how do you so again as a case manager? I feel like you might get a a variety of different, we'll just call them calls, right? A variety of different people looking for help. So one thing that I'm kind of intrigued by is how is it that you go about removing your, or maybe you don't, but do you find yourself having to remove your personal opinions on a scenario when taking in something from a customer? Meaning like you might just naturally jump to a conclusion and say, okay, you know, but obviously this person is coming to you with a concern. They feel that whatever they're telling you is legit and it's real and it's what's happening. So, so how do you go about kind of separating yourself, your own personal beliefs versus just 
taking in what they're bringing to you and, and dealing with it, you know, as as it is as they're telling you. I think what it is, because because you're dealing with people who have no paranormal experience or their experiences right. from TV. So I, you know, I can't fault them for sometimes what they're thinking, and so you listen to their story, and. <clears throat> You try to, like, if you if you think that might be the case, that's one thing. If you think it might not be the case, you're just like, okay, but as, and I understand this now, this is what I'm doing as an energy worker. I'm also kind of feeling them out and saying, you know, can I, can I raise your energy? Can I lower your energy? If I can, if I feel that give, mm-hmm. and it's a strange thing to be describing, but if I can feel that give in them, that they're also open to other possibilities, then more than likely we'll take the case. Um, if they're set on, they know exactly, I have a demonic entity, that's it, there's no negotiation, there's no flexibility, then, then we're, not your, we're not your team. Right, yeah, right. Um, and as far as, <laughs> you, we got stung, and you know, I'm sure every team eventually hits that, is we went on an investigation looking for a female um, and totally, you know, focused on that female and ended up finding a male. And we still caught the evidence, but it was like, I still feel like it was a missed opportunity. You know, we were so focused on what we were told was there. Right, right. So now it's, for me, it's really important to go, okay, I heard your story, but now I'm here to find out for myself, Right. you know, what's going on. Because any, you know, like four or five of us could go, even if we're sensitive, we could go into this building and we're all going to perceive different stuff. Sure. Mm-hmm. So this might be a lot that the homeowner isn't perceiving as well as what they are. So, mm-hmm. you know, I try really to stay neutral, but right. I've got to make sure that even though they're experiencing the stuff, that they can be a little neutral too. Sure, because obviously they're trying to fill holes as far as in their own reasoning for why this is going on. So if, they, if they're understanding, okay, they've got activity going on, now they've already tried to piece together why so they're 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 going to start filling those holes anyway where if right. you go in with more of the the open mind and and, and, and the clearer mind it, like you said you might not be focused on one thing and then miss another opportunity right. or, or miss something. and it's and it's uncomfortable they're uncomfortable they are overstimulated i mean you know you get touched or you something moves i mean there's no way to prepare for this i mean it even startles us mm-hmm. so i get it that you know this is uncomfortable and so that's one of the things when we go in there with our clients is to try to get them a level of comfort even with this activity. Right. That's the ultimate goal for us. Yeah. One thing that I do have to say, just because I know you made mention that sometimes like there's cases where you won't take because they're so set on certain things or it just may not be a good fit. But one thing that I have to say, like give props to MPS is that you guys try to help them find somebody that will fit That's for huge. that. Yeah. And it's not like you're just like, nope, sorry, kind of turn them away. You try to still help them, yeah. even if you don't investigate or take their case on. A- so. Absolutely. And, and you know, there have been cases where we've, we've oh, so interesting, so interesting, so many layers. We want to investigate. It, it just sounds like an incredible case. But this person is overstimulated, exhausted, just needs rest. They need a break. And it would not be fair for us to go and do our paranormal research just for us to be able to do that. It's like mm-hmm. she needs relief now. Yeah. And yeah. she wants a removal. And yeah. so that's when we go, okay, we need to put our wants aside because we want to be there. And we need to say, you know, this is, this is a team that does removals, cleansings, and blessings. You're in good hands. Go ahead and give them a call. Mm-hmm. You know, and I, and I think what's really important about that, and actually this is kind of going in a different direction, but I, I want to mention is that I think one of the reasons why, you know, Missy and I, you know, have, have felt so comfortable with MPS and with your group is I, I think the philosophy behind the whole thing that we share is a lot of the same, where when we kind of started our thing, it was to 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 get like-minded people together and to be able to get in a room with people and have a conversation that you might not have elsewhere because you might not be comfortable or whatnot. And, and, and when you and, and with MPS, you know, you guys have really worked hard in trying to build this, this network 
of multiple groups. So like you said, if there is a case that comes along where, you know, it's, it's not, it's not the right case for you guys, or, um, you know, it's not something that you guys necessarily specialize in, but now you've got the, the tools and the groups to then say, Hey, you know what, this isn't for us, but let me put you over to such and such because they deal directly in that scenario. So the community work has been really good too. Right. And that's, I love being a cheerleader. I love finding out about all these different teams, finding out about their little superpowers and what they're good at. I could have a totally fantastic conversation with a client, but still feel another team is is a, just a better fit. I'm going to refer them. Yep. I just I don't know. That's just just I want to do what's best for that client mm-hmm. at that time, with with ho- the hope that they understand that they had a good conversation with us, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that if it fell through or if they wanted to add a layer or something, they could always come back and talk to us as well as making contact with that other team. Yeah. You know, I, I now they have a contact with two teams. Right. You know what I mean? And and that's kind of like the goal is that we're not we're not here to compete, you know? Yeah. I like it. I like, I that. like that too. I do. Go for it. Oh. Now it's on, on the spot, spot Missy. On the spot. spot. Okay. Oh man. Okay. So with TAPS, I'm going to kind of go into like a TAPS um, question. So with TAPS being so science-based, now is there any tools or techniques that you guys do not use or prefer not to use? Well, here you go. Stepping in a big old pile. <laughs> oh, yes, I did. <laughs> and we don't use spirit boxes on our investigations. And I'm not going to take away anything from any team. We worked this weekend with some amazing teams some of the best teams some of the best teams here in Maine that that use it but they use it on a regular basis they're comfortable with it sure they're used to listening it's it's a skill Mm -hmm. um we don't use it because really MPS we have we like a lot of silence we like noise discipline Mm -hmm. um on our on our investigations I like that I like that and we prefer our EVPs over you know what might be coming across of a spirit box. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong. We have firsthand experience of you know two o'clock in the morning. The same little boy's voice came across three separate times and answered a question. Do I think that there is potential with that piece of equipment? Yes, but now you know we're talking about noise, which is contaminating any audio that you're trying to get. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some false positives with that, so. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing is, if you want to talk about the metaphysical side, the energy side, when you are constantly opening up communication with spirit, and I don't care how you do it, whether you're a psychic, whether you use a Ouija board, whether you use your your spirit box, they're going to start following you. Mm -hmm. And if you're not aware of this, you can maybe get the wrong crowd. And so... When we're going into investigation, we're we're trying to find out what's already there. Yeah. We don't want to bring we don't want to like bust Add out a park. <laughs> we don't want right. we don't want to have a raid. Well, that's important in to some say that. Guy's I, house. I unfortunately I feel like again there's 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 probably a handful of people in the field that might that might do that where and again, this is where I think it's so important that you guys recognize what's the best fit for the right individual yep. because I feel like if you were to take on something you know, and, and you already have such a, a unstable, like you said, the, the homeowner, whoever it might be, it might be in this unstable scenario mentally, physically, as far as with what's going on. And if you incorrectly diagnose it, just like anything, and, and then you just leave them well worse off than but, when you if you're, them on. And if you bring the spear box in and there's, and, it, and it's, and I feel awkward swearing, but if they're saying shit, fuck, damn, yeah. kill you, Satan, bitch. I right, mean, holy, right. this homeowner's going to go, oh my God, what? Yeah, we're out of here. But this could be <laughs> something that's following that spirit box handler around. Mm-hmm. This right? might not sure. be something that's in their house. And, and that's the biggest thing for us is that we need to know, you know, we, we're trying to go in there completely neutral and, and not affect this environment at all and just observe what's there and so we kind of feel like that's one piece of equipment that might affect that result i agree with that actually that's interesting i don't think i've I've thought of it that way too as far as you know as an investigator what you've brought yourself into that home 
uh, whether it be through the tools that you use. Um, I know we, we always talk about, you know, as far as when we're done with our tools, you know, of taking care of them, cleaning them, cleansing them. Um, but that, that is an, a, a, an interesting idea. Like, you know, when you've got people that are so dead set and they've used these same tools in so many different scenarios and maybe they haven't quite properly took care of them or... But put, see, now you're, now, now you're stepping into the, the metaphysical side right. where some investigators do not approach this Correct. as you know, a psychic or sensitive or energy wise, mm -hmm. where if you say, did you cleanse that piece of equipment? They're going right. to look at you and go, what? What are you talking about? Right. <laughs> you know right, what right. I mean? They're going to do what, Snow White? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. <laughs> so there's, the, and that's one of the things is that you can observe people. And, and again, everybody has their techniques and stuff, but you can observe people who just say, and this is the funny thing is we can go on an investigation with all our different beliefs, and as we're walking out the door, every single one of us stops our feet, looks at the house, and says, you cannot follow us home. Mm -hmm. Every single one does that, mm -hmm. but not every single one cleanses their equipment right. Right. when they get home. Right. Like, my stuff stays on the porch. Okay, whatever. You know what? You know, I don't think anybody hitchhiked home, but hey, you know what? You're out there. My door's closed, and this is my home. Yeah. There's there's a boundary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, you're talking about an energy person, not just somebody who's doing this, who watches all the TV shows and. Sure, solely from the science side of it. And, well, I you know, and sometimes they're not even from the science side of it; they're just from the thrill side of it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And and you know, there, there's so many considerations, you know, to have when you're actually going to a residential, somebody's home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, and again, and I think there's a respect aspect of it too. If you're dealing with somebody's ancestors or family members and here you come in with a heavy metal rock band cursing and swearing and calling them names, yeah. I can imagine that that would be not well received. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, sure. I don't think so, you know. Sure. Um, so, you know, as far as, so I, I'm, I feel like I'm safe saying, you know, as far as you using your, the, the empathic side and, and being, sensitive and open and aware and so how do you I mean I know a lot of people talk about putting up their own boundaries and um, you know setting setting limits but as a case manager how hard is it or again or if it is at this point to not become just just to not just take all that in you know how, at what point did you like how I'm trying to figure out how to word this how did you what was the process you found worked best for you as far as not taking all of that home with you? And I don't mean the attachments. I don't mean taking a spirit home. I just mean like as somebody who being empathic and is just feeling the energy of that room to be able to walk away and then say, okay, and then leave that, you know, leave it at the door, so to speak. There's two things in my life that kind of set me up for um, being in a good place now. I wasn't in a good place then, mm -hmm. but now I'm in a good place. And one of them is I have sensory issues. One of them is um, being tactile defensive, auditory defensive. So I, if I'm overstimulated, I shut down. I've always done that. It doesn't make it good <laughs> with relationships, family relations, sure. friends. It doesn't work well with that. But with the paranormal, it works very well. Um, also, I grew up with domestic violence. Okay. And so... You know, being able to just shut down and walk away no matter what right, was right. It was survival. And so, you know, having that rough road, you know, when you're in the middle of it, you're just like, this really sucks. But now, now on this aspect of it, I'm realizing that I have built-in defenses. Um, so, you know, I'm not glad it happened to me, but now that I'm on this side of it, it's just, it's easy to just go, okay, this isn't mine. Right. Well, and you can take, like you said, it's, it's not glad that it happened, but you're able to take away it's knowledge. useful things. Right. It's right. knowledge. You right. know, bad things happen to us and, you know, to focus on the scars or the trauma is, it's not, that's not the point. It's the knowledge. You came out of that experience different and that difference is going to help you later on. Absolutely. Well said. Absolutely. So kind of coming back into something which you had said earlier about being an energy worker. Now, what specifically do you mean by that? So let's go down another rabbit hole. When you deal with psychics and energy workers and, you know, they all have this, you have to be this or you have to be that or you're not legit. And so I've tried to measure myself through society standards and it doesn't work. 
So I'm realizing more and more that I'm a natural healer, an intuitive healer. Mm -hmm. I have my Reiki too, which I love my Reiki. But going through the classes, <laughs> um, I kind of freaked out the instructor, and she actually said, "We we don't we don't talk like that. We we don't no 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 no. That's not Reiki. Don't do it. It's not Reiki." <laughs> and I'm like, "Where do I go to learn this?" Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, I'm a Reiki practitioner. I love it. It saved my life at least twice. Um, but I'm starting to realize I'm a natural healer, intuitive healer. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And is that something that you feel helps you and, and you take that into the paranormal field as well? It's something that I've tried to keep separate. Okay. Um, being TAPS family, you, you, you know, you're science-based. You know, none of that woo-woo shit on the investigation, sure. mm -hmm. and it's kind of easy. And and talking to one one of your one of your meet and greets, we talked to that guy who talked about the different brain waves, the alpha yeah. and the beta. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I know from hearing that conversation, from being on investigations and being the case manager, and from like going to the Oliver House. Yeah, um, I am definitely case manager on investigations. That's it. I you know, none of the not a lot of the energy stuff. Seeps, seeps in because gotcha. I need to make sure this comes off like the client gets what they need the team right. is safe everything goes good I'm yeah. pit bull that's it yeah. um, but going to the Oliver house I had absolutely no responsibilities whatsoever yeah. and I found myself daydreaming which I was a little bit embarrassed about in the beginning but I'm just like I had a blast and I did this walk through and mm -hmm. this kick ass reading and I'm just like you know so it's kind of a, ooh, I guess, a growing phase, kind of a transitional phase where I'm like, you know, I really want to start using what we do with Maine Paranormal Society to start validating the people's sensitivities. Yeah. Like, how can we get evidence of what is legitimately happening to people? And so, you know, to be able to bring investigators in blind on an investigation and have them do a reading and have it successful. Yes. Is that's it? Boom! Right there is you know, and we can only just build on that. Mm -hmm. And the next, you know, the next. I don't want to call it an experiment. It was an exercise. You know, the <laughs> exercise that we did at at um, Curtis Cemetery, Swan Island. Um, yeah. That was phenomenal to yes, use that was really a human being as yes. a spirit box. No, I think that's yeah. And actually, I was going to ask about that, and it kind of just kind of paint people in here on what took place. So everyone's seen. Um, oh, I'm assuming that everyone has seen, you know, the use of the spirit box and uh, even the isolation method or the Estes method where someone is listening to a spirit box, uh, but they're not hearing the questions to try to give some of that validation. And like you had said this weekend, I know you guys tried the, uh, the exercise of, you know, removing the spirit box side of it and having just the sensitive side of the individual who is listening and, and to utilize that ability. But not and necessarily them being sensitive either. Like we, tr no, we, we did had being with, open, maybe being open. We had like remember. two people that said they had no sensitivities yeah, that right. participated. And they were some of like, I would say <laughs> like the most interesting ones. Yep. Like, so we still yep. did like the blindfold and sure. the, the head, the noise canceling headphones and everything. Sure. So, so to kind of paint the picture is you, you've got an individual sat down, you've got them, visually isolated, audio isolated, so they're hearing nothing, they're seeing nothing, and then you've got people that are asking questions, and in your, you're encouraging the individual to just open their mind and just speak freely as far as maybe what they're feeling, what they're hearing, whether it's um, seeing, seeing yeah, you know, the yeah. third eye, yeah. um, and then so they're, they're becoming almost as conduit, and, and I guess, I don't want to say that it's, a, it's them channeling, it's just them... Just putting be, down their guard. Putting putting down their guard. But and, and you're perceiving the yeah. energy that is in the environment around you. Right. There's information. Our brains talk to our bodies with electrical impulses. Correct. There's data in that electrical impulse. There is data in the energy around us. Absolutely. And to you know to have them sit down. And this is the one thing that really amazed me is that they weren't constantly talking. No. They were so quiet. Yeah, they I were think that so they were, like almost intimidated, like a little bit at first. But they did it. I, I mean, I want to give a shout out. If anybody's listening that went to Swan Island and actually participated in that exercise, respect. That yes. was cool. Yeah. Um, three out of the four, they felt the same 
kind of motion, like dizziness, like almost drunk, intoxicated almost. feeling, maybe like the spins or kind of thing. Yeah. Like, and and this is the thing is we would get a group, that group would leave, and we'd get another group. Like they're not hearing, they're not able to talk to each other in right. between. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? And they're just, oh, this is what I feel. Mm-hmm. It was. You know, yeah, and then hearing them talk about it the next day, like after, like that yeah. was even cooler too. Like, and to I know me, this isn't my interview, but I kind no, of no, you were there. <laughs> I mean, you were there, and you were participating in the, and, and it was your idea that you brought forward. I mean, it it, it, it was, was Richie's, just, but I'll take the you I'll you gotta take the <laughs> color because you were there. It's all right, I'll, I'll but allow it. you know, to that there was one guy who was, and I and I'm gonna give a shout out because I think he was from Ghoul School. Um, he was sitting in the chair, and I felt um, that male energy that was coming that I called William, mm-hmm. I felt him coming closer. He had retreated, and now I feel him coming. Mm-hmm. And this is where it's really cool to just, you just be quiet, and you see how the people around you react, you mm-hmm. know? And he did. He goes, I'm starting to feel heavy. I'm really starting to feel heavy. And I'm like, score. I'm like, it's confirmation that I really do feel this energy coming in closer. Yeah. And so does he. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was, I don't know. Anyway, this is how we're starting to bring the energy aspect of sure. it into with the with the science part. Because you can't do this for this long without realizing that, you know, you have to kind of join the metaphysical they go hand science. In hand. You kind of have to. So this is my question is how do we validate this? Legitimately catch evidence, validate this these abilities or these sensitivities. Well, I, I think ab- absolutely, and I, and I think because we've talked about this a lot too, as far as just you know having more tools in the toolbox in the sense of you know using both to validate each other. You've got the science side and the, and the physical evidence to validate the metaphysical and, and vice versa. And, and I wonder, and I wonder what your thoughts are. So I, I, again, I know going back to being taps based and and being very rooted in the science of it all. Do you do you see? I mean, and, and I know there's a lot of other groups that are already combining the two, but as far as from from your side, from where MPS comes from, and where and, and being the Taps family, do you see it moving more into that direction where it's more acceptable to to be combining the two, and and, and from even from a homeowner standpoint, because I think I, I think the more that you're able to put this out there and build that kind of reputation and and have positive effects from it, you know, it'll homeowners become more comfortable as well. I mean, I'm, I know they obviously want the, the pictures, the audio, the sound, the video. Well, they I, want to see I it. And I think so we need to it. be very, very careful because, you know, Hollywood is not doing any of us a favor. No. No? Um, <laughs> you know, and we need to be very, very careful when we're, when we're putting this out there because we need to have that evidence. Right. Because just saying... You know, like just standing in a cemetery and feel, you know, I feel male presence and I'm calling him William or he, his name is William. Yeah. That's not enough. Right. No, it's not enough. But. So to legitimately, like if we had, if we did an investigation there and we set up all of our gear and we were there for the night and we were settled in and we got a male voice, you know, it would start. It would start, you know, legitimizing this male spirit is here. Right. One of the other things about MPS is we it's not a one and done. I mean, we don't we prefer not to investigate a place just once. Mm-hmm. We prefer to go back two, three, four, five times sure. because we want to do we get the same result each time? Are we talking to this same spirit each time? Yeah. And how can we build the evidence each time? And I think that's when you're going to get the homeowner's confidence right. because they're going to know that you are you're only, you know, you're only going on what you're getting and what you're certain of. Right. Um, you know, unfortunately, not you know, not every psychic is you know, unfortunately, not legit, and not every psychic understands. Or and this can go with anybody going into somebody's home. They don't necessarily understand how jacked up you can get a homeowner. You know what I mean? Like sure. you say, oh, I sense a negative presence. See you, Alice. Have a good day. Right. Right. Alice is going, <laughs> where the fuck are you going? <laughs> you know what I mean? Or she's going to be calling you up in the middle of the night going, get your butt yeah. over here now yeah. because this negative entity is, or this negative stuff is going on. Yeah. When in actuality, it's not negative. It's just uncomfortable. You're overstimulated. And, and I think once they see the science aspect of it, they see the process of it. Right. And if they talk to people who are just 
an assurance salesman. <laughs> you know what? You know, yeah. it's Jake. Jake from State Farm. You know what I mean? If yeah. if they just see that you're a normal everyday person, you have a job, you sure. have a home, uh, it brings a lot to them to say, okay. And the other thing that you know we gotta we gotta get homeowners to understand is that this is this is just a normal thing. This is. It, to me, this is not paranormal. This is not abnormal. This is a naturally occurring thing. Right. Yeah. And right. so this is our goal with MPS is we try to get our clients to learn how to live with the activity. Right. Mm-hmm. And and so I really think getting them grounded yeah. is is critical yeah. to gaining confidence of homeowners. Absolutely. Once once you can help them to see, like you, like you said, that this isn't... Yeah, you, know, you hear the word paranormal activity, and you, and you automatically assume you're on this island, and this you're in this unique scenario, and it's just happening to you, and what's going on. But, but again, to, to help them understand, like, no, no, this is this is as much a part of life as life itself. This yes. is just the after side of it, yeah. um, and it's something you deal with everywhere. It, it's just you know you happen to be more subjected to it in your home for whatever the reason is. But again, it doesn't mean that it's that it's wrong or that it's not everything is. A demon out to get you, <laughs> you know. No, there, there's no. and, and to, to to coach and teach and again to to really going in again back to being as the case manager and really understanding the homeowner and understanding what their needs are and then empowering them to to deal with the situation and and it's it's and that's another thing is is we really do want them to be able to empower. I don't want them. Obviously, if we take on a client and they call me at 2 o'clock in the morning, yeah, I'm dealing with it. Mm-hmm. That's because I took them on as a client. But ideally, I want them to be able to deal with it and be comfortable dealing with it. And then maybe the next day I get a message and go, wow, last night was insane. Yeah, <laughs> and right. I'll be like, do you need us to go back out? No, you know what? I got this. Yeah. I told the motherfucker to get out. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. And, you're, and you're sitting there going, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Feeling. It's, like, you know, you know I, the last thing I want, I don't want them to pay somebody to clear their house when they're the ones that are actually haunted. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, you know, and, and then the next time it happens, what do you do? Pay someone to clear your house. Pay someone to clear your house. That's insane. When does it stop? Right. You know, and... In understanding that keeping your space and your home cleansed and clear is an everyday thing. Sometimes it's a two or three day, two or three time a day thing. Like you don't clean your house once and it's clean forever, man. That'd be great. I only it's wish. About 20 right? <laughs> you have to clean sometimes every day, definitely every week, mm-hmm. every month, yeah. twice a year. I mean, it's like you have to clean your house. This is your energy. This is you and you need to maintain it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And our society has kind of gotten into the, you know, they don't want to maintain it. They want somebody else to maintain it. it. And when you start talking about people being haunted, a lot of times these uncomfortable experiences are trying to push them in a certain direction. And if they're not going in that direction, it's not going to get any better. Right. So, you know, a lot of times it's raising awareness of saying, hey, um, could they be telling you something? Sure. We had a client who... Was ha- had a horrible time. She had a horrible time. We go out and we we invest because I'm like, do you want a removal? And she's like, I don't know what I want. Just just get here. And so we did. You know, we investigated and, and I'm just looking at her, going, geez, lady, I think it's you. <laughs> I think it's you. And and yeah. we need to talk. And I think it was a couple months later. She said, I hung out my shingle. And I'm like, what do you what do you mean? She's like, I hung out my shingle. Psychic readings. Good for her. She's like, completely changed her life. Quit her job. That's it. I'm doing psychic readings. Living her best life. Yeah. That's awesome. Like, I, I was speechless, didn't see that coming, but I knew I knew something needed to change, and she was being pushed towards that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So. Oh, I love seeing the spiritual wake up, the spiritual happening. You know, yeah. It's being a part of that on their journey, it's special. Yes, it is. It's sacred. It really is. It is. And sometimes you guys get to be that first step for people and kind of, like, that's, it's a good first step. Like, you, you guys are a good introduction to it because it could be, it could go really bad and it could go really good. I mean, we're greeters at the door. Yeah. You know, we're, we're greeters at the door and we're like, you know... We we know we have aisles and we have different things in each aisle and you know let me kind of direct you to what you need yeah and sometimes you know we are what they need and sometimes we're not and that's you know let's let's find out what you need and let's try to get you going in that right direction. 
Okay. I think so. Wait, wait. <laughs> oh, so I had one more question just because it's so fun to ask. We usually do one of these like, n- like stupid questions at the end. But what we'll is call it a softball? A softball. a softball. A softball. Okay. Softball. How many people can you piss off in five minutes? <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Maybe. How do you feel about Borbs? Dorbs, Borbs. Borbs are Borbs. I love Borbs. I love the Borbs. They're adorable. They're they are fuzzy. Yeah. I love Borbs. <laughs> yeah, I love Borbs. If anybody doesn't know, Borbs are bats. <laughs> On camera. cameras. Oh, yeah. okay. So, but anyways, okay. So what is your biggest paranormal TV show pet peeve? Oh, what a landmine. Mm. What a land... Don't... Why are you yelling and screaming? <laughs> Seriously. I mean, I understand. It's Hollywood. That's... Yeah. You know, stop yelling and screaming. And if you do, do run. Keep running. Don't call us. We'll call you. I love that. I love that. You can say that. That's it. Don't... That's it. Don't... God's well, sakes. you know, and, and, I, and I think... And, and I know we usually use that as kind of a... a, a kind of a, a, a loose question at the end, but... Again, back in your in your field a, as the case manager, I mean, what kind of effect? I mean, you must see it a lot as as far as the homeowner. They've done their own research, we'll call it, which a lot of the times probably they've just they've seen things, they've watched these shows. I mean, how how do you? That must make it difficult, you know, as, as like you said, because they're coming to you with all the facts. Well, already one of the, because one seen, of the things we do is mm-hmm. we say if if you want us to investigate, it's shut the TV off, stop watching the movies. And yep. let's really talk paranormal. Yeah. That, you know, you're overstimulated and we need to get you in a different space. Yeah. And it's seriously, shut the TV off, you know, um, shut the computer off. These yeah. shows are not doing you any favor. Yeah. And I think that that's people that genuinely want the help, need the help, they're going to listen to. Right. Yeah. Like somebody that's going to that type of advice. Like, it's not helping. Like. No, it's not. And it's not. It's fun to watch. It's but. not. You know, it's You're hilarious. It's fantastic. Yeah. But it's not real. It's not mm-hmm. what we're really doing or going through when we're investigating a case. Be, I mean, you're watching one hour of an episode. We're, we're there, you know, each investigation is, you know, five or six hours. Yeah. You know, plus the, you know. You know, the, the evidence, hours yeah. of evidence review, yeah. you know, not counting revisits and stuff like that. I mean, the, you know, it's it's not one hour. It's not one hour and everybody lives happily ever after. I, I see. I find that amusing, too, is, you know, as we're getting ready to do another uh, group event where, you know, you might get a lot of individuals who, you know, their experience have solely been based off of the shows. And, you know, so you take them in there and they're expecting knocks and bells and howls and whistles <laughs> and, and faces and all this and it's like no that it's a lot of just sitting we're it's just like, sitting we're there just we're sitting sit. here we're, sit the dark. Uh, we're uncomfortably <laughs> shuffling and yeah. going god i hope they don't think i'm a complete freaking yeah. loser you know yeah. like yeah. You i know, know you guys were, you were saying the other day at the event he's like they're gonna think that we're boring but i think oh that... i i say we're boring as fuck every single time i'll tell you we're boring as fuck yep. I don't think that we were boring the other we, day. You no, know, I I don't think so either because I really loved what we did. Yeah, it was but awesome. I'm not. You know, I don't know how much of what we did they took in. Yeah, you know what I mean. It, it was this was a brief glimpse into us and into what we do. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't maybe they didn't know the setup. But I think you kind of open their eyes that there's other options. There's I hope other they did. ways that you can possibly take something and tweak. I hope it. they yeah. did because you know, like there was there was one girl who. You know, pointed to the back of the cemetery, and she said, "It's creepy up there." And I'm like, "Okay, you all, you're in the dark. You're in a cemetery. Okay, why is it creepy? It's creepy up there. Yep. Okay, use a, more words. Yeah. Describe to me what you're feeling." And she didn't get past. It's creepy up there. I'm not going up there. Oh, right. you don't have to. Right. First off, and that's another thing. You don't have to investigate alone. You don't have to investigate in the dark. You don't have to do anything else anybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. You just are there to experience on your comfort level what's going on. Right. But it was like just trying to say to her, you know, okay, but what does that mean to you? You know, what, what are you feeling? And, and she was completely blocked on the, it's creepy up there. Yeah. And it was kind of bummed because like, we didn't have enough time with each group to say, Tap into that. Let's, like, let's go sit up there. Let's all go sit up in that corner because sure. I really, that's what I wanted to do. Is, let's dig into this. It's and... creepy up there. Let's go. And and we've had homeowners that'll say, oh, well, you don't want to go into that room. 
Like, actually, yes, oh, I oh, do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll be right here. Yeah. And they go, oh, wait, wait, wait. And I'm like, we're all, there was a, it was like a crawl, attic crawl space. And she was like, oh, that's where the psychic said the demon was. You don't want to go in there. And, like, we all just, like, sardines. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, head piled, back for it. Pack them all in. Piled into, <laughs> and I think, I mean, I'm the shortest one. I was fine. But I think every single guy nailed their head on one of the, one of the beams. <laughs> but we all crammed in there. We're all, you know, the... Yeah, you know, yeah. we're all breathing in the dark, and we're all going, um, you feel anything? I'm like, nope. You feel anything? Nope. And, of course, someone's going, yeah, I'm sweaty. Yeah, yeah I'm bitchy. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, yeah, yeah. okay, let's, you know. A little hungry. Yeah, but just gonna... It was funny how that homeowner, did, you know, she brought us in to investigate, and she's like, oh, you don't want to go in there. Well, yeah, yeah. And that's where all the parents That's where we're, that's sure. <laughs> what we're here that's for. That's why you've called us here. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, just to get people to that's expand. Funny. Yeah. Expand their thoughts. So, I kind of want to throw, so we threw a little bit of a softball, and this one might be a little bit more of a, we'll call it a knuckleball, maybe. Yes, so, that's really pissed people off. No, this this might be an internal one, actually. Uh, but, so, you, you've clearly kind of defined two different versions of your um, uh, investigative ways, right? So, you've got She's the... Got hats. You've got... I've got see, multiple personalities. <laughs> Joe, he's, he's candy coating. Well, so, yep. but, but you've made reference to... So the example of using the Oliver House, where yep. you got to go and you got to just uh, use all of your abilities. You got to do things in a way and you didn't have the responsibilities, no. right? You did yep. it for you. And then you've got the way that you handle all of your cases as a tap manager. I'm sorry, as a uh, case manager representing taps and, and, and main paranormal society. Which do you get more joy out of? I love the Oliver House. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I love, it, it I was just, it was too. so nice. It was this really nice floaty feeling. It was really I just can't even explain it. It was almost euphoric. Yeah. To just float and 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 maybe this is I don't know, like you kind of feel like you can almost float from this time into that time. Yeah. You know, you're kind of floating, you know, um Swan Island was a little bit like once everything cuz we were there for an event, we were there to help another team. Sure. So I was in case manager mode and couldn't sleep that night because my mattress went flat. Yay. <laughs> so I'm wide awake and, and it's getting light out. And I'm like, screw it. I'm going to go down to the river and watch the sunrise. And as I'm, I don't know, like this just feeling comes over you. And, you know, here's this face in the clouds that's just getting bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. And, and I'm just, I'm just like, this land is talking to you. You know, this, this, you know, you feel like you can kind of float between now and then. And, you know, it just... I really love that feeling. It yeah. was just, I couldn't even describe it. Like, it wasn't even about natives and settlers and investigators, and it just wasn't even about that. It mm-hmm. was just about... Being present in the moment and... Being just, alive. Yeah. It was about the being be alive. Being here now, yeah. Yeah, and, and that was kind of the same thing with the Oliver House. I mean, yeah. I really... Like, when we started out, we had this hard rule of we don't pay to investigate. Sure. So we never went to any of these places. We just, you know... We were doing three cases a month, you know, residential, yeah. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont. We were running hard, and now I'm just like, damn, I, I, I'd like to just hand you money and right, <laughs> just right, walk right. through just, this yeah, house. Yeah, yeah. You know what I, I mean? I'm like, shit. Well, and, and I asked because, so you know, when you, you you had brought us on to the 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 residential that we did, and I got to say, like leaving that home, it was a very emotional experience. Like I felt very, I felt so warm hearted leaving. And, and seeing the homeowner from the time that we got in to her telling her story. I mean, there was so much involved in that case in general, um, you know, and, and what a strong woman, you know, that, that, that she is. But just to kind of see the almost the relief um, and just 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 seeing that process of helping somebody, it gave a whole new uh, a whole new purpose of it to me as far as like I, I love going out to get the personal experiences and to go out and just to try to have that moment for yourself. But to kind of see somebody else go through that moment and and get relieved from whatever stress they were going through, like it, it brought a whole new level of of comfort to myself and, yeah. and like you know an emotion. So I think that's why I, I feel like it'd be a, a tough balance of you know yes we all want to go out and have our personal experiences and just be able to enjoy it and and not have to be on the clock so to speak. Um, but then you also get so much joy in 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 
good feeling of helping somebody too. So I, I feel like it'd be a, you know, kind and of the goal. Of this, oh, so is it okay if I'm just like Richie? Is it okay if we go drop like a thousand dollars on Waverly Hills? <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, is sure. That we okay? can, yeah, yeah, we can We'll drop I that, feel yeah. like that was a good moment. That was a, that was like a good like lead away moment. Speaking of floating, let's just float on over the Waverly. Yeah, yeah, let's get on over there. Part um, of the yeah. goal, you can come to. part of the goal is not just to have clients; it's to have friends. It's to have absolutely. You know, when when we're making contact with with these families, and we're, I mean, we're hearing their history. We're hearing their their personal. It's a very emotions. vulnerable um, moment. It's extremely vulnerable and. Like, this is someone that, you know, I'm going to talk to, hopefully for the rest of my life or their life. Mm -hmm. We have clients from from the very beginning that we still, I mean, we still talk to. Good times, bad times. You are connecting on one of the deepest levels. That's it. That's it. (laughs) I mean, it's almost like you're, you're you're actually reintroducing, you're getting reintroduced to soulmates. Yeah. Because you're just, it's just that deep. You're just like, I know who you are. I know what you do. Absolutely. Um, Now, let me show you, let me show you your soul in a mirror yeah because this is who you are and what you do and it, it's just um you know for me it's just it's not even about it's not even about the paranormal it's not about cases it's just about it's about people and connecting on that spiritual level and raising their vibration so that they actually feel connected to the universe again absolutely perfect i, really like, I like that so, yeah i do too so, towards the end here, we want to give you an opportunity to tell us and to tell everybody uh, where can we find you guys? Where should we be looking for? Clue us in <laughs> on some of the things you guys got society. going on. You can't. <laughs> we're, just, we're shadows. We've been I blocked mean, from everything. I don't know what to say. We don't do public events. I mean, this is. Yeah, but you guys are on Facebook. We are on Facebook. You can find us on Facebook. That is, for the most part, our traffic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, we try. I okay. I try to go live um, as you much as job. from from locations that we can. Most of the locations we just can't. Um, we do have a. Uh, oh God, you're gonna. I'm gonna say website, and you're gonna ask me what it is, and I don't know. But maybe we can post it. I'll post it when when this we can when the show that. goes Absolutely. live. Yeah, I'll post it. We do have a website, but may our main traffic is on Facebook. Yeah, um, and when, that's main Paris Paranormal main, Society. Yeah. Yep. And, and then you, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say you guys also are on Instagram too. Even though I don't know how upkeep that is. Well, but. yeah, that's like a bus with a flat tire. <laughs> but it's there. But it's there. It's a place to stay. But I'm not, not sure there. if it's still on the road or not. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, we have Instagram. I mean, yeah. I think I successfully linked the two together so that if I actually post on Instagram, it posts on Facebook too. Yeah. But yeah. if I post on Facebook, it doesn't go to Instagram anyway. But um, I know, but we we don't do a whole lot of public events. Mm-hmm. Um, this year has been a really different year for us, where I've, I've kind of pushed the comfort zone, <laughs> and I know I'm going to get some some backlash from from Luke. I'm I know I am. <laughs> He's already said no more camping. <laughs> no more. So um, you know, if you do see us at an event and we're awkward and boring as fuck, that's just us. They're now, not boring. They're not. And, and now, and how about also if 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 there is somebody who is looking for help, and and what would be the best way to to reach out? And... Um, seriously, Facebook. You can you know get on the Facebook page and message message us. Um, that's just pretty much the easiest. Right. You know, I think there's a link on the website. If you find the website, you can send us a, a message or an email there. Um, you know, right. perfect, mm-hmm. perfect. Well, Jen, thank you very much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate it. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. On more for many levels, <laughs> many reasons, but uh, definitely for joining us on this. And uh, and thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Um, and we will be back next month with another all new guest and, and some new stuff to talk about. Yes. Really quickly, though, I want to announce that November six, um, we are having a fourteen fest. Um, it's a oh, hold big... on, wait. I feel like this is a good opportunity. Hold on. Oh, Richie's keep going. Keep talking. Keep talking. <laughs> oh, that's a laugh track. That see, I'm not... okay, everybody's going to be laughing at me. But I pretty know. much, we're having a big paranormal conference. Um, you can head to our fa- the Paranormal Five Facebook page to get more information about it. Um, it's still in the beginning process of it, but it's out there. It's happening. It's gonna be good. We're so excited about it. We've teamed up with Nate Brislin um, from the um, International Cryptozoology Museum 
to work with that. So we're okay. super pumped. All right. Well, thank you guys as always, and we will touch back with you next month. Yes, thank Take you care, guys. guys.